I'm Patrick Norton from Tech Thing, and I'm here on Digital Trends today to talk about two-factor authentication. It's one of the best tools you can use to secure your accounts on Google, Facebook, Amazon, Twitter, PayPal. It is a long list, everybody. Think about it. If somebody really wants to wreck your life, all they need is access to your personal email account because all too often, the email address you use every day is the key to gaining access to everything in your life, from your bank account to all those shopping sites where you keep your credit card stored on, not to mention all of your personal private emails, which could then be made public. Worse yet, imagine if your ex or somebody that just flat out hates your guts had access to your Facebook page. Not only would they get to see all your private messages, but they could pretend to be the worst possible version of you they could imagine ugly people. And I shudder to think of the fact a few years ago where teenagers were sharing their passwords to prove their love. Oh boy. Look, two-factor authentication, not about proving your love. Facebook calls it login approvals. Twitter calls it login verification. Amazon and Google prefer two-step verification. And security geeks call it two-factor or multi-factor authentication. But whatever you call it, it means you have to complete an extra step beyond typing in your password to access your account. It's simple. This is a good thing. It's an extra layer of security so people can access your accounts on a PC even if you say, oh, left it open accidentally. Look, two-step authentication isn't perfect. If the online service gets hacked, well, hackers might find a way around it. If somebody has access to your phone and your password and you blast all your SMS messages to your lock screen, they'll get that code to get in. But if you're concerned about somebody hacking into your accounts, it doesn't matter if you're worried about a family member or an online thief, it'll make things that much harder for them to make your life miserable. That's what two-factor authentication does. It also makes things a little harder for you though. You leave your phone behind and you'll be jumping through hoops to get onto your favorite social app. Twitter and Google, for example, well, they'll let you, you have the option of generating backup codes in case you lose your phone or in case you don't have access to it, which is kind of nice. Are you ready to try out two-factor authentication? In Facebook, just click on the triangle in the upper right-hand corner, then click on security on the left side of the page and click on login approvals. Check the box that says require a security code to access my account from unknown browsers and enter in your phone number and you're pretty much good to go. All the other websites, whether we're talking about Google, Amazon, PayPal, possibly your local bank, dozens of others, have similar processes. You're gonna to have to go to the website and search for two-factor authentication or two-step verification to find out what that particular website wants you to do because the controls, the settings, they're always in different places. Personally, I suggest you try two-factor authentication for one service, whichever one you're the most concerned about. Then see if you're ready to roll it out across all the services you use online. That's what I did. I'm a little paranoid. Well, I'm a lot paranoid, maybe. But I'd rather not be staring at somebody trashing my name while I think maybe I should have turned on that whole two-step thing. I'm Patrick Norton for Digital Trends. Thanks for watching.